Good evening, boys and girls. How are you tonight? Good, I'm glad to hear that. Welcome to Westfield Library. My name is Mrs. Cooney, and I'm going to be reading you some great stories tonight about cats and dogs. Do you have cats and dogs at home? Does anybody have a cat or a dog? Or, uh, had one, okay. Well, we have very, very fun stories tonight to read about cats and dogs. So let's begin with our first one. Our first story tonight is Harry the Dirty Dog. It was written by Jean Zion and illustrated by Margaret Graham. And it was published by Harper Collins. Do you know Harry? Harry is a funny dog. Harry was a white dog with black spots who liked everything except getting a bath. So one day when he heard the water running in the tub, he took the scrubbing brush and he buried it in the backyard. Then he ran away from home. He played where they were fixing the street and he got very dirty. He played at the railroad and he got even dirtier. He played tag with other dogs and became dirtier still. He slid down a coal chute and got dirtiest of all. In fact, he changed from a white dog with black spots to a black dog with white spots. Although there were many other things to do, Harry began to wonder if his family thought that he might really have run away. He felt tired and he was hungry too. So without stopping on the way, he ran back home. When Harry got to his house, he crawled through the fence and he sat looking at the back door. One of the family looked out and said, there's a strange dog in the backyard. By the way, has anyone seen Harry? When Harry heard this, he tried very hard to show them that he really was Harry. He started to do all his old clever tricks. He flip-flopped and he flop-flipped. He rolled over and played dead. He danced and he sang. He did these tricks over and over again, but everyone shook their heads and said, oh no, it couldn't be Harry. Harry gave up and he walked slowly toward the gate, but suddenly he stopped. He ran to a corner of the garden and he started to dig furiously. Soon he jumped away from the hole, barking short, happy barks. He'd found the scrubbing brush and carrying it in his mouth, he ran into the house. But up the stairs he dashed with the family following close by. He jumped into the bathtub and he sat up begging with the scrubbing brush in his mouth, a trick he certainly had never done before. This little doggy wants a bath, cried the little girl and her father said, why don't you and your brother give him one? Harry's bath was the soapiest one he had ever had. It worked like magic. And soon as, as soon as the children started to scrub, they began shouting, Mommy, Daddy, look, look, come quick. It's Harry. It's Harry, it's Harry, they cried. Harry wagged his tail and was very, very happy. His family combed and brushed him lovingly, and he became, once again, a white dog with black spots. It was wonderful to be home. After dinner, Harry fell asleep in his favorite place, happily dreaming of how much fun it had been getting dirty. He slept so soundly, he didn't even feel the scrubbing brush that he had hidden under his pillow. Did you enjoy that? Harry is one of my favorite dogs. He has many adventures. 
Our next dog story is Alfred's Nose. It was written by Vivian Flesher. And it's a Catherine Teagan book, an imprint of HarperCollins. Everyone loved Alfred. He was always ready to play ball, he liked toys, and he smelled like popcorn. Most of all, children loved his silly round face and his big sloppy kisses. Sadly, Alfred did not like the way he looked at all. He thought his face was all wrong. His head was as round as a pumpkin, and he didn't have much of a nose. And his tongue hung out of his mouth all of the time. In fact, some children didn't recognize that Alfred was even a dog. Maybe he was a bat or a walrus. Others thought he was sticking his tongue out at them. And then there were the ants. They often took a shortcut across Alfred's tongue as he napped. Alfred's mother told him that in some countries, ants are considered quite tasty. She also reminded Alfred how much children adored his looks. But mothers always think their babies look beautiful. One day, Alfred was invited to a dress-up party. He was quite excited because he thought a costume was the perfect solution to his problem. Two girls at the party were dressed as princesses. They suggested that Alfred dress up as a princess, too. But Alfred didn't think that pink was his color. Next, he tried a devil costume, but it just looked silly. He tried on a pair of glasses, but he couldn't keep them from slipping off his flat nose. He tried on a coonskin hat, but decided that he'd rather chew it. No disguise seemed right. Then he noticed two boxes of animal noses. He tried a lovely crocodile snout, but it even frightened Alfred. And then he tried on a duck's bill, but it was the wrong color. He tried on an elephant trunk, but it was so long, Alfred couldn't see the book he was reading. Finally, he tried on a fake dog snout. It looked wonderful, just like a proper dog nose. But, one of the girls pointed out, none of those noses covers your tongue. So Alfred tried on a cow's nose. It covered his tongue completely. Then Alfred started to worry. How could he eat? Worse, one of Alfred's friends began to cry. She thought he looked scary. Alfred tried to look away her tears, but the mask got in his way. And what about those sloppy kisses? Alfred ripped off the mask, and everyone cheered. We love you just the way you are, Alfred, they said. He kissed all his friends. But there was one small problem still. That night, before Alfred even closed his eyes, the ants began crawling across his tongue. So he did what any dog would do. Tasty, just like his mother had said. Do you, I think Alfred's very cute, don't you? Yes. And I'm glad he didn't wear any of those disguises. I like him just the way he is.